Hi guys, I just wanted to take 10 minutes to quickly wrap up the drag and drop cliffhanger in the task tracker video. The main focus is to run through how I went about deleting the original draggable item without interfering with the copy. So when an item is moved to the bin or the completed section, how do we preserve that copy in a new location whilst deleting the original item that we no longer need? I'm going to do this in a new drag and drop project, but similar to the task tracker enough so that you should be able to transfer it directly across if you wanted to finish up that project. Or start a new one with drag and drop as the main function of this new project that you have in mind. So I've done npx create react app and now I'll install Tailwind CSS and then install React DND as per their instructions. I'm not going to do much CSS, even less than what I usually do, so we can keep our focus on the drag and drop functionality. I'll zoom in afterwards, but let me just clear up the files. Great, I've copied across these two import statements, DND provider from React DND and HTML5 backend from React DND HTML5 backend. Remember, we need to wrap the top layer of what we're dragging and dropping with the DND provider supported by the backend HTML5 drag and drop API. Then Let's create our components. I'm going to do this in the context of throwing a note into a bin. So I'll have a bin.jsx and a note.jsx. Shorthand RACFE to set it up and then incorporate it within our app.js. That's what the files will need, so I'll close this sidebar. Then we'll most likely have a state of notes, right? Let's set that up with React use state. And then we'll have a bind items state. These will be two arrays. The notes array will hold whatever notes we have and then the bin items array will hold whatever we throw into the bin. In setting up the notes, I'm going to skip what we did with the task tracker, the whole adding, editing and deleting a task thing. It's all there, so I'm not going to repeat the process. I'm just going to simplify it and have these initial notes and save these in local storage.
and then get it from local storage to set notes as these three initial notes in one use effect block. And if we console log it, it's right there. Then we just need to map out each note. The important thing here is that we must not use the index as the key. The purpose of the key is to help React to keep track of which items have changed, added or removed. So the key should give the elements a stable identity. But due to the nature of drag and drop, you know how it duplicates an item, the index number will not be stable enough. If we can't use the index, what other unique identifiers can we use? Well, if you're using a third-party database, you'll probably have access to a unique ID via that database. But we're using local storage, so we can either use an external package like UUID, or we can make something up ourselves. I try to avoid installing dependencies wherever I can, so I'm just going to do this. New date dot get time and math.floor math.random times a thousand. Independently, neither of these are unique enough to satisfy the requirements for a React key, but together it works. Then we pass down each note. We receive it in our note.jsx and just display it. Then in our bin, let's create a box where it looks like an area that we can drag things into. We'll give it a border and some height. Have text alignment to center. You can obviously use an image or manipulate the box a little bit more, but for demonstration purposes, this will work just fine. Now let's import use drop from React D&D. We'll then have const can drop is over in curly braces and then comma drop equals use drop in our callback function we accept let's call a note you can call this whatever you want it just needs to be consistent with the dragging type which you'll see later and with drop let's give this a name of the bin as an object and you'll see how this is used in a minute finally in the collecting function we monitor the status of the drag and drop, whether it's over and whether we can drop. I'm not going to do anything with these, but they're there as an option. So you can use these as conditions within the return of your file. So if can drop or is over is true, you can change the background color or opacity or something like that. It's used in the React d, &D documentation. So if you wanted to have a look for inspiration, link down below of course in our div we just need to add a ref of drop cool now drag we import use drag from react dnd in our note.jsx then const square brackets and then is dragging in curly braces comma drag equals use drag And here inside this callback function, type is required and it's note because that's what we wrote down for a drop. Item is required and it needs to be either an object or a function. For us, it'll be an object. So let's have um, name and then colon note. We can have end that takes item and monitor. This is optional, but what it does is when dragging stops, end is called. If drop was handled and the drop target specified a drop result by returning a plain object from its drop method, 
it will be available as monitor.getDropResult. Then if there is an item and a drop result, we can work with that. As an example, we can send an alert to say, you threw this item into the drop result name, which is what we wrote down in the object of our drop function in bin.jsx, right? It was the bin. So when this works, it should say, you threw, I don't know, note two into the bin. Then in the collecting function, we can have is dragging. Finally, we should specify the ref of drag in our div here. Let's see if it works. Great, we're getting the alert with no errors, so we know everything is being handled properly. Now, let's see what we're putting in our bin. In our app.js, let's pass down binned items to our note.jsx, where we will accept it. And just under our alert, let's have a temp list equals binned item. We'll push this drag and drop item into our temp list and save it to our local storage under the name of binned items. JSON stringify this temp list, then refresh window by window.location.reload. Back in our app.js, we'll set our binned items in a use effect hook. First, we get the array of items from local storage. Then if there is an array, we set binned items as the array. We pass the binned items down to our bin component and map it within our bin component. If you find yourself asking, why are we mapping it within our bin component as opposed to in app.js, like what we've done with our notes, you should try it out and see for yourself. When learning to code, it's always good to play out these what ifs and why this and not that kind of scenarios to see exactly what happens. Sometimes you learn that it's just one person's preference other times you learn why it's not done that way. So it's always a good learning experience. All right, let's drag and drop. And it's showing up exactly what we want to see. Now the crux of the issue. At the moment, you can still see note one, note two, and note three above the bin. And you can actually drag note one into the bin as many times as you want. But if you don't want that, you know, as per real life physical objects, if you throw a piece of paper into the bin, that piece of paper is not then simultaneously on your desk and in your bin at the same time. It's just in your bin. If you want art to imitate life, this is what I do. After setting the binned items as the array, I do two nested for loops to compare the notes array with the binned items array. If a notes element is the same as a binned items element, we just splice it from notes. This is all pure JavaScript stuff. And this nested loop comparison is just one of the ways to find if there is the same element in both arrays. There are various other options available too. And in time, you'll see how these different options cost you. So some of these other options might take much longer to run and you'll see a lag, whilst others are more efficient. But for smaller projects, you'll barely notice a difference. Something else to mention as well, this nested loop may be a safe option, but there may be a better way to do this overall. Because if we think about this logically, if the original note gets deleted once it's dragged into the bin, we never really have to check through the entire binned items array. 
We surely only need to remove whatever matches the most recent item that's being added to this binned items array. I'll leave that with you to think about and play around. Before we test out this method, we just need to add notes as the use effect dependency down here. Then in our browser, let's manually empty out our binned items array so we can test out what we've done. You can also do this programmatically with the clear method or remove each item with the remove item method. But if you accidentally leave that in, you may wonder why your arrays are getting cleared every time something happens. So just something to keep in mind, it's not a big issue. It looks like our drag and drop is now functioning as we intended. Cool. That's all from me. See you next time.